Hey there and welcome to another Sony VEX tutorial by Techtopia. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your videos high definition widescreen for YouTube. As you can see, this tutorial that you're watching right now is crystal clear. The quality is flawless. It's absolutely incredible to see. And even if you're not watching it in high definition on YouTube, the quality is still really, really good. But if you are watching it in HD, it's like so good, it's just unbelievable. Like, the quality is amazing, and I'm not trying to brag, but it's quite easy to see how good the quality is on my videos. So, today I'm going to show you the settings I use to render my videos for high definition on YouTube. So, without further ado, let's get started. Right here, I'm on Sony Vegas Pro 8. Uh, this should work with all versions of Sony Vegas. Uh, I'm not too sure about Sony Vegas Movie Studio or Platinum, but I do know for a fact that it works with all versions of Sony Vegas Pro. So, let's get started. Right now, I just have an empty timeline. Right now, what I'm going to do is import some footage. So, I'm going to go to File, Import Media, and I have this clip here that came with my computer of a bear. So, here it is in my Project Media tab. I'm simply going to drag it into my timeline. If we look in the video preview, there is my uh, footage. Now, uh, as you can see, it totally fills the entire frame. I just want you to remember that. See how the clip fills the frame? Just remember that. Now what we're going to do is uh, adjust our project properties so that YouTube can recognize the file as high definition. So what we're going to do is go to File, Properties. And then this dialog box will pop up, and here we can adjust our project properties for YouTube's high definition settings. So the first thing we're going to do is change this template. Right now it's at NTSC DV 720 by 480, 29.970 frames per second. We're going to hit this drop down arrow and change it to HDV 72030p, 1280 by 720, 29.970 frames per second. Alright, make sure that the width is at 1280 and the height is at 720. That's very, very important. The pixel aspect ratio will be at 1, the output rotation will be at 0 degrees, and the field order will be at none progressive scan. The frame rate can be whatever uh, frame rate your original source footage is. Usually it's at 29.970 for NTSC, but it could be different if you're in the PAL region. But uh, just change it to your source frame rate. So try not to resample it, just leave it at the original one. So uh, just letting you know. Now for pixel format, we're going to change this to 32 bit floating point. Compositing gamma is going to be 1. Full resolution rendering quality is going to be at best. Make sure it's at best. It might be at good, but we're going to make, make sure that it's at best. Motion blur type can be at either Gaussian asymmetric or just Gaussian. doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave it at Gaussian asymmetric. And deinterlace method is going to be either blend fields or interpolate fields. doesn't seem to make much of a difference, but make sure that it's not at none. And then you can just adjust the folder if you want, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to have start all new projects with these settings and hit OK. Now as you notice, our video preview has gotten significantly larger. But remember how my video fit the frame before, but now it doesn't? As you can see, the negative space is black. Now the reason this is happening is because my source footage is a 4x3 video clip. And this player, the video preview right now is in 16x9. So they don't match. So if we upload this file to YouTube right now, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to just have the footage here, but the, there's going to be these black bars on the side, which doesn't look too good considering how YouTube is now playing their videos in 16x9. So it's really easy to fix this problem. What we're going to do is go to our event pan and crop tool. That's this little white square right here that says event pan slash crop. Or we can right click our clip and hit video event pan slash crop. Here is our pan and crop window. Now to fix this problem, we're going to go up here to preset. Right now it's at default. I'm going to hit this drop down arrow and change it to 16 by 9 widescreen TV aspect ratio. As you can see, our video now is in full screen, widescreen, and uh, there's no black bars and it looks really, really nice. But it does uh, unfortunately cut off a small portion of the top and bottom of the clip. And you can fix this as well, but it might warp your video and it might not look too good. So. I'm just throwing that out there, but to fix this, under source, we're going to have maintain aspect ratio to no. But I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Now we can proceed to the rendering process. What I'm going to do is go to file, render as, 
and I'm gonna choose where I would like to render my file. I'm just gonna choose my documents. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this HD clip. And for save as type, to get the best compression results, I'm gonna render it as a WMV, that's Windows Media Video V9. The one at the very bottom. This will give you the smallest file size and decent quality, really good quality actually. Probably the best that you can get uh, that I know of. Now down here we have all these options. Uh, most of them you can just leave uh, at the default, but make sure that render loop region only is either unchecked or faded out. If it's checked, uh, your video might turn out all black and it won't be good. So make sure that's either unchecked or faded out. Now for template, right now it's a default template. I'm gonna change it to six megabytes per second HD 72030p video. Now before we actually start rendering it, we're gonna adjust our template here. So we're gonna go over here to custom and have video rendering quality at best. Now under our audio tab, we're gonna have include audio checked. The mode is gonna be CBR. The format will be Windows Media Audio 9.2. The attributes will be 192 kilobytes per second, 48 kilohertz, stereo, AV, CBR. Now under our video tab, we're gonna have the mode at quality VBR. That's very important. Change it from CBR to quality VBR. Now the format's just going to be at Windows Media Video 9. The image size, this is very important, we're going to make sure that it's at high definition 1280 by 720. If it's anything lower than that, YouTube will not put that Watch in HD link on your video. So make sure that it's at 1280 by 720. The pixel aspect ratio can be at 1. The frame rate can be at the original source frame rate. So uh, I already explained this, so I'm just going to leave mine at 29.970 NTSC. Seconds per keyframe will be at 5. And this quality is going to go all the way up to 100. It may be at something else by default, but you're just going to click and drag it so that it's at 100%. Now for all these other tabs, you can just leave them alone. Uh, they're not really that important. Now what you're probably going to want to do is save this as a template so that you don't have to re-enter all these settings every time you make a video. So if we go up here to where it says template, we can actually back up this text and type whatever we want. I'm just going to type YouTube HD. Now if we hit this floppy disk icon that says save template and hit OK. Now anytime we want to render a video, instead of re-entering all these settings that we just did, we can just go to template and select YouTube HD and it will now uh, automatically input our settings and we don't have to enter it again. Now if we hit save, the video begins rendering. Now, once this file is uploaded to YouTube, you'll get really nice results for the quality You'll get that Watch in HD link, your video will be widescreen, and you'll get very, very nice results. So uh, that is how you render your videos for high definition and widescreen for YouTube. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you would like more Sony Vegs tutorials, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a lot of Sony Vegs tutorials for you guys to check out. So if this video was helpful, please leave a comment saying so. Rate the video 5 stars. If you're having any problems with these settings, just leave a comment below and I'll try and help you out. But anyways, thanks for watching this video, and take care.